the Insta360 ONE R, three months later. Still worth the money? What do you guys, uh, what do you guys think of the new look? This is what I've been working on during all the craziness that's been going on around the world. Hope you're all okay, by the way. But you guys came for this, the One R. Since the last video made on this camera back in January, a few things have changed. Alongside their massive amount of firmware updates, one can only hope the camera has improved since release. And it definitely has, but it's not everything I hoped it to be. In the first video I made on this camera, I mentioned that I wish the One R was able to shoot in 4K 24 frames per second, which I'm sure we can all agree is a must no matter which camera you buy nowadays. And well, they actually listened. They added that option of filming not only for the 360 mod, but also for the one inch wide and the 4K wide lenses. Would have been nice to have had that available at launch, but they did mention it would be rolled out with firmware updates in the future, which happens to be now. As much as I think this camera is a great tool to have, I can't help but feel like this was rushed to the market. During the launch meeting, it was mentioned a few times that this camera is a pre-production model, so it will have some issues that will later be fixed with firmware updates. It all sounds promising, but it is a huge risk for the company to go down this route. To provide a timeline, creators were given the camera a few weeks before the embargo ended, allowing us to post about the camera, but we weren't allowed to upload any footage. Personally, I don't think that was the best decision. When you hear a new product launch surrounding a camera, the first thing you want to know are specs and footage. And with so much buzz about a camera that can potentially give GoPro a run for its money, you want to make sure it's ready to give your company the best chance for high sales. Now, even though I do think it was rushed to the market, this camera is a huge leap in the right direction and Insta360 is to thank for that. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of this camera since release. Their most recent update now allows us to select between their .insv format and .mp4. Having the option of .mp4 files helps cut down editing time by a lot since you no longer have to select the .insv files, kind of hard to say, import them into Insta360 Studio app, trim and edit them, and then export them to edit in Premiere. Time is money, so all the more efficient, the better. Something I would really like to see is to be able to use an ND filter or polarizer on the one inch mod and the 4K wide angle. This would allow us to drop our shutter speed to double our frame rate and get that natural motion blur we all love without making our image brighter. Here's a makeshift one I made out of an old pair of sunglasses. Clearly not ideal, but gets the job done. People only see the final result anyways, and that's all that really matters, right? Indie filmmaking at its finest. AirPod connectivity is also available, but it's not as great as I had hoped. The audio quality is decent, but there's a very apparent syncing issue going on during playback. I should be connected right now to my AirPods. I should be connected right now to my AirPods. This is how it sounds straight from the camera versus when I fix the issues in post. I should be connected right now to my AirPods. Nothing that can't be fixed, but still forces you to do extra editing. Looking at the hardware, the only thing I would change is to get rid of this poor choice of opening and closing mechanism. Unless your hands are the size of a child, it's difficult to open and close, let alone trying it with a case on. Having a sliding mechanism would have been a better option in my opinion. The video quality of the 4K wide is honestly great and I don't have any complaints there. Bullet time, which is basically an ultra slow motion mode, is super cool to use, but the quality of the image seems to look kind of compressed. Lots of potential there, so would love to see an update on that in the future. The selfie stick actually works very well. Haven't had any issues with the blending of frames when hiding the pole. I have noticed that it does a better job when the camera is further from your subject though. Shooting 5.3K 360 footage looks great as well, but it's not actually 5.3K. It's really just cropped down into 4K. Now the question you've been waiting to hear answered, is it worth the money months later? My answer to that is yes, but hear me out. Even though this is not a GoPro versus Insta360 comparison video, it's important to know that each company has an advantage over the others. I believe that GoPro does have a slightly better stabilization with their Hero series. The One R seems a little jittery while the GoPro looks smoother. This video by Authentech goes more into depth if you want to see a comparison video. The audio recording with the One R is pretty decent as long as you're not moving fast, but since it is an action camera, it makes the audio almost useless if you don't have external recording while doing any form of action sports. This isn't really anything new for action cameras though. Audio can be pretty tricky to work with 
when a lot of motion is involved, regardless of the camera that you're using. Alrighty, well, that's it for testing the audio. The fact that you can connect your AirPods to the One R is pretty cool, but it needs work. GoPro, on the other hand, has an adapter for external audio, but it was also discontinued without any comment from GoPro for more than six months, which isn't the greatest for customer service. Insta360 did mention they'll be releasing their own adapter as well, but I have yet to see any news on it. I'll be sure to cover that product with a video when it comes out. Color grading isn't bad. I'm not a fan of their choice of color grading, but for someone just wanting to film and not have to worry about all the editing, I think it works great. With that said, there's still one thing that makes this camera worth it, and that's the fact that no other camera allows me to quickly go from shooting 4K wide footage to 360 footage, go underwater, or mount it to a drone all in one camera. The important question you need to ask yourself though is, what are you trying to achieve? Personally, I think people would buy this for the versatility, being able to act as multiple different cameras in one. I see this camera fitting well with people looking to create cool social media content rather than professional filmmakers. Since I believe it fits that market best, I think the price should have been a little bit closer to 400 rather than its price tag of 479 for the twin edition and 550 for the one inch mod. But overall, I would say it's worth it for the versatility options. On the other hand, if you're just looking for an action camera and have no need or desire for shooting 360 footage and all the other options, just buy a GoPro. Currently, and I say currently because it could change, but if you wanna do what the One R can do, but with GoPro's products, you'd have to purchase a Hero camera plus the GoPro Max, which would run you over $700. Insta360 definitely set the bar with this product, but things can change. This opens the door for lots of other companies to develop a competitive product, which for us filmmakers is a good thing, but does make it tough for brands to constantly innovate. So respect to Insta360 for trying something new. One thing I would really love to see for the future of action cameras would be to allow us to say, film in 4K 60 frames per second and then be able to switch the footage to 4K 24 frames per second in the editing room. Meaning that the camera would somehow record all formats at once and allow you to select that one that best fits your edit. The only camera I currently know of that allows you to do this is the RED camera lineup along with their RED Giant software, but that's obviously easier said than done. If you're thinking about purchasing this camera, please do so via the link in the description. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what you shoot with though, as long as you're getting the results you want and you're enjoying the process, that's all that matters. As much as these types of cameras are fun toys, it's important to own and purchase gear that help you land more clients or create better videos. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Now go and film something. Peace.